Hi fifth graders, this is Miss McCormick. We're going to be doing your spelling words for this story, Leonardo's Horse. In this list of words, there's lots of rules, so I need to break it into two different videos. So we're going to do the first seven words, and then we'll do the last of the list. So just a reminder of what we're doing, the phoneme graphing mapping is what this is called, where we connect the sound, which is the phoneme, to the letter, which is the graphene and we map it on a grid of boxes. It's suggested you just watch and listen the first time that you go through the video so that you can listen and process the information. And after that, then you can map out the words with the video. You can do that this maybe all together as a class or at home because you can access these on YouTube. And also you can um, do this during your computer center or RTI center. Um, whatever the teacher feels is appropriate. You can pause or stop the videos as you need to so that you can review and absorb the information as we're going through each word. Alright, so let's get busy. Your first word is going to be waterproof. These words in this list are compound words. In other words, each word is a word by itself and then they're put together to have a new meaning. So, waterproof. W -a -t er, p, er, u, f. That's a lot of sounds. The first sounds w, a. It's spelled with an a in this word. T, er, e r. Because this is at the end of a base word. Remember, these are compact words. The two words put together. So water. E r is the most common. Er and it's at the end of a base word. The next word is proof. P. P. My lips are together so the line comes first. Please make sure your line goes under the writing line and the bubble sits on the writing line. P. Er. U. F. Now, there's two sounds of the double O. There's U as in boo and U as in book. This one is U as in boo. Now it could also be the long U sound because that's the sound. U, which is the U sound. But in this word it's spelled with two O's or the double O vowel team. Waterproof. The next word is teaspoon. Sounded out. E s p u n teaspoon. We've got the word tea, like you drink sweet tea, and spoon. T e t as in what we drink sweet tea is spelled with an e a, and it's um, a lot of teachers teach the students vowel teams where two vowels go walking, the first one does a talking, but that only works about 40% of the time. So that's not a really good rule to use because it does not happen the majority of the time. Now, EA as a vowel team has three different sounds that it can make. A good way to remember that is the phrase or the sentence, eat a great breakfast. E, A, and this eat has the long e sound, e. e a in the word great has the long a sound, a. And breakfast, the e a has the e, which is the short e sound. And the word t, the e a says the e sound, as in eat. So t spoon. My lips are closed, the line comes first. The bubble sits on the writing line. Ooh, spell with two O's again. And N, mm, teaspoon. The next word is grasshopper. The two words are grass and hopper. Let's sound it out. G, R, A, S, H, A, P, R. The first sound is g, 
the bubble comes first and then the line with the hook going in the front. G. Er. A. It's a short A sound. And S. Alright, this is that base word. Now, I need to teach you the floss rule. The floss rule says we double the F, L, or S at the end of a one syllable word when it follows a single short vowel. Okay, this really should say a single syllable base word because grass is a base word. It is a word by itself and in the compound word, two words are put together. So, this is a, the base word is a single short syllable. I mean a one, one syllable and it follows a single short vowel. So we're going to double the S. Some other examples are down here. Okay. Grass, hopper, <sighs> ah, p, er, e r at, is the most common uh, e r er sound at the end of a base word. Now, we need to double this p, and let me show you why. I've got this chart. Let's see if we can. I'll just bring it all the way up. All right, so I added our word to the end. Our base word is hop. Our suffix or ending is the er, the one who hops. Okay. Now, does the base word have one syllable? Hop. Yes, it has one syllable. It only has one vowel sound. Does the base word have a short vowel sound? Ah. Yes, it does. Does the base word end in one consonant sound? P. Yes, it does. Does the suffix or the ending begin with a vowel? The E. Yes, it does. You double the final consonant if all answers to the questions are yes. So we had yes to its one syllable. It has a short vowel sound. It ends in one consonant sound and the suffix or the ending begins with a vowel. So we're going to double the P and add the ER. So we double the P. Now, we put it in one box because it only makes one sound. Ha, P, ER. Okay. The next word is homesick. The two words are home and sick. Let's sound it out. O, M, S, I, K. The first word is home. O, M. Now, this is a long O sound. We need to make it a, a long O, so we use the silent E. The silent E goes in the same box as the M because it does not make a sound on its own, so it has to share a box. The E makes the O say its long sound. O. Home. Sick. S. I. And K. Now for the word sick. For the K at the end of a word following a single short vowel, it will be spelled with a C K. Again, at the end of a base word where the K is immediately following a single short vowel, it's going to be spelled with a CK. Home sick. The next word is barefoot. Barefoot meaning no shoes, no sandals, no socks. It's bare. The way that we spell that bear is different than a grizzly bear out in the woods. Okay, so keep we have to keep the meaning in mind when we spell some of these words. Barefoot. Let's sound it out. B A R F U T. The first sound is B. My lips are closed when I make the sound so it reminds me the line comes first. B. And then the bubble sits on the writing line. B. A R 
Now that looks like bar. We may, need to make that the long vowel sound. So we need a silent E. It goes in the same box as the R because it does not make its own sound. It makes the A say its long sound. Bear. Foot. <sighs> uh. Remember the two O's put together can represent the U uh in a base word. And this one, instead of U, like proof and spoon, this two, uh, two double O's is like book, foot, book. Okay, so in your words already, we've already used both sounds that are represented by the double O. Barefoot. The next word is courthouse. Sound it out. K or t. Ows. Oh, I just figured something out. It's k o r t. Ows. Okay, the first sound is k. The next sound is o. It's going to be spelled o u. That's an unusual spelling of o. And the next sound is er. K o r t. House. Ow. Let me get this and show you. Owl, as in owl, in the middle of the base word is spelled with an O-U. If it's at the end of a base word, it's going to have the O-W, like bow. Remember, this is the owl, like an owl. Okay, so house, the owl in the middle of a base word is spelled with O-U. And s now, there, we need a silent E on this word because it's not to make this say its long sound because that's a vowel tune. It's already doing the sound that it wants to make. It's to make this word not look plural because S or ES at the end of the word means more than one. And that's not the purpose of this S. It's just to make this sound. So we have to use a silent E to make that word not look plural. Court house. All right, the next word is going to be earthquake. There's quite a few phonics um, rules for this word. Earthquake. Earthquake. The first sound is er. This is an unusual spelling for er. It's e-a-r. Er. My tongue is out, my, I'm blowing air, my voice is off. The TH is a digraph. Digraph is two letters representing one sound. Because it's one sound, it goes in one box. Earth. The next word is quake. Okay. K is the sound. I'm just going to write this up here. K and W. In the word quake, it's spelled with a Q-U. Now, here's the thing about the Q-U. The, the bubble sits on the writing line, the tail goes down and to the back. Okay? Think about this as a duck. The duck says quack. Okay? Imagine he's got a beak coming out in the, on front of the head. The head's going this way, and the tail comes to the back. So that helps you remember which way the Q and the G goes. Okay, the duck the head is going this way and the tail is in the back. W. In when we have a Q in a word, we're going to have the U right after it. If you want to, you can circle those because they work together to say the qu, but they represent separate sounds, so they are in separate boxes. The next sound is A. And k. Now remember up here in homesick, the k at the end of a word, just like quake, 
but this one is following a single short vowel. So spell the k is spelled with a C K. This is in the single syllable word. The k is at the end, but it's following a long vowel sound. A. Just because the vowel is by itself doesn't mean anything. It's what is the vowel saying? It is the A sound. So the k is spelled with a K. Now how is that A saying its long sound? It's the silent E. The silent E is making the A say its long sound. Earthquake. Alright, I'm going to stop the video here so I can uh, upload it easily. And I'll see you in a little bit for the second part of the